robust brick protection. It's finally time I show you how to set up ISFS hacks, which can unlock some awesome capabilities on your Wii U. This program was made by Jan Hoffmeyer with contributions from others, and it gives you amazing brick protection, including cold booting Rednand, which is great to have if you're concerned about having the Hynix chip. We talked about that in this video on the screen, which if you want, you can click and learn more there. Another awesome use for this program is that it allows you to partition your hard drive so that you can have Wii U games and VWI files on the same storage device. Device. And it does more, which we will see later in the guide. So let's set it up. Head over to the link in the description for the written guide and it should take you here. And I'll just emphasize the warning. Although this is in use by many users, proving itself is safe and reliable, you'll still use this at your own risk. But in summary, this program is similar to BootMe and Preloader that we have over on Wii Homebrew. So essentially it won't prevent your Wii U from getting bricked, but it will give you the ability to actually fix it. So this page here is the actual written guide. And I would suggest you follow along on here. That way you get all the information you need about the software. Here's a full list of everything it's capable of, including the plugins, which there is a handful that you can use after you set this up. But down here in choosing the exploit, there are different options, and I'm gonna be showing you how to install it on the Aroma custom firmware, which is the latest homebrew environment for the Wii U. If you have not modded your Wii U, you're in luck, because I'm also gonna show you guys how to set it up on a stock Wii U as well. But you'll need an SD card formatted as FAT32. The SD setup is the same, it's the exploit that is mainly different. First step we need to do under preparing the SD card in the third paragraph a zip archive is right here So this is going to take us to the brand new ISFA hacks website, which looks fantastic if I do say so myself But it has an all-in-one download that's going to make this process much easier than before So just click download it'll grab a zip file So you do need an extraction software like 7-zip or WinRAR or whatever you want to use but that is all we need. We can exit this website back on the guide. And again, if you prefer to follow this one instead, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, I'll be showing you how to set up the SD card next. So open up your downloads and your SD card that you used to mod your Wii U. So here we go over on your SD card where it says view. We're gonna click on it, go to show, and make sure there's a check for file name extension. That'll just make it easier than if it doesn't show the .elf, .rpx, whatever the file type is. So once you've done that, open up the isfahax release, go into SD, and this is everything we need, plus more. But to make sure we have everything we need, just highlight everything and drag it onto the root of your SD card. Just hit replace. You can go back and delete the zip file no longer need it don't need our downloads anymore and now as you can see it did add a fair amount but there's a few files that we don't actually need so if I bring up the guide again you can see that some of the files are for a certain exploit only so we can get rid of certain files so let's go ahead and do that so we'll start off with the boot one now we can go ahead and delete that we can delete the launch.rpx we can delete the recovery menu and now go inside Wii U apps and you can delete the fw image loader so that just helps keep our sd card a little bit more clean but now our sd is fully ready to eject and head over into our wii u but before turning it on just wait so go ahead and insert your SD card, but when we power on the Wii U, we're gonna press and hold B on our gamepad. This is because we have auto boot set up for Aroma Custom Firmware. If you don't have auto boot set up, but I feel like most of you do, then you'll have to press and hold B loading the health and safety app. But when you do that, you should see this screen here. Now, if you have not modded your console with Aroma, you can go ahead and turn on your Wii U and head into the browser app. So for you guys, I went and turned my auto boot off. So go into the internet browser, Go ahead and click the top search icon, clear it, and type this in, u.weedb.de. So once it looks like that, just hit OK, and you should see this page here. And we're going to click on hacks, but once you do, you need to press and hold B. So try to be quick, click on hacks, and press and hold B. And you should see this screen. So now whether you have a modded Wii U or a stock Wii U, we should all be at this screen here. Just use the D-pad on the gamepad to go down to FW Image Loader and press A. And this should load us into the Minute menu. And it should look just like this. And I'm going to zoom in just to give you a better view. So in this menu, your gamepad and your controller do not work. So you have to use the power button and eject button, similar to boot me on the Wii. 
So before we actually install Isfahax, we're gonna back up some important files. So click the power button and go all the way down, back up and restore, press the eject button. So on the first one, dump CPROM and OTP, click the eject button and it'll back that one up really quick. Just press power to return to that menu. And now we're gonna go down to dump SLC raw. So that is the fourth one down here, press eject. And this one takes a little bit longer, but we'll just let that finish. All right, that did take way longer than the first one, but it's done. Now all we do is press power to exit. And now back on this page, we're gonna go all the way down to the very bottom and press eject on return to main menu. And now it's time to actually install Isfahax. So to do that, we're gonna go down to boot iOS IMG. If for some reason you can't see this menu, you hit the power button six times and then eject. And this should take us to the Isfahax installer. So on this one, the buttons are exact same as the previous menu. You might notice that your LED on your Wii U has turned purple, that's completely normal, don't worry. But go ahead and click eject to continue. Isfahax can be installed, click eject again, and click eject on install Isfahax. Press the power button to go up to yes, proceed, and eject, and it should install just like that. Hit eject on continue, and we'll power off our Wii U by hitting eject. And now that it's off, just go ahead and hit the power button and we'll turn it back on. Your LED should be purple, and it should launch us into the minute menu, just like so. So now, just like boot me on the Wii, instead of loading directly into the Wii U menu, it loads into this menu, giving us a chance to save our bricked Wii U in the future if that ever happens. And don't worry, if you want it to load straight into the Wii U menu, we can still do that, but we have a couple steps first. So now we need to back up our SLC RAW again now that we have Isfahax installed. So use the power button, go all the way down to backup and restore. Click eject, go down to dump SLC raw. Click eject and we'll let that do its thing again. The reason we're doing this now again is because the previous backup did not have Isfahax installed where this one will. And that way, if you ever need to use this program to save your Wii U, you will keep Isfahax. All right, and there we go, it's completed. Press the power button to exit there. And then again, you can go all the way down to the very bottom and hit eject on return to main menu. And now we're gonna load into the Wii U menu. So hit the power button twice to go down to the third option. It should be patch SD and boot iOS SLC in brackets. Press eject on that, and it should load into your Wii U menu. Don't worry, this is all normal. And here we go. Of course, you're not gonna to wanna to do that every time, so we will change it to load straight to the Wii U menu instead. And if your console just boot loops through minute over and over again, don't worry, it's an easy fix. On the guide under the booting section, here is the troubleshooting step. Just click on the Aroma one. Go ahead and download the payload loader payload zip file. Extract it and drag it onto your SD card. And that should solve it. But now Isfahax is all set up and installed. So power off your Wii U and let's head back onto the computer. And now we're gonna set it so it goes automatically into Aroma, skipping the minute menu. And just to be clear, I'm showing you how to do the fast booting option here rather than the auto booting with SD as that is up here. I find the fast booting option easier and more straightforward than the auto booting with SD option. But if you'd like to read over the differences before setting it up, feel free to do so over at the guide here. And you'll see how easy it is to boot into the minute menu after setting this up as well. But let's set it up. And to do this, we're basically going to be using a different fw.img file. But we don't want to get rid of this one because in case our Wii U bricks, we can put this one back on. So I'm going to create a folder on my root of my SD card, use in case of brick, and just drag the fw.img in that folder. Now go into your hacks folder. And this fwimg is the one we want to use. It is different. It's smaller. This is the fast boot one. So I'm going to cut it. Control X, go back to the root of your SD card and paste, Control V. And there we go. We can eject our SD card and head over and it should boot automatically into Aroma. All right, turning my Wii U on and it should load directly into Aroma. And there we go, using Pretendo Network and it should get my custom theme, lovely. So just like that, we have Isfahax installed, but 
we don't see that menu when we load our Wii U, so it's like it's not even there. It's just there in case we need it. Or if you want to use the plugins like partitioning a hard drive, which is extremely useful, you have it there as well for that. So again, just for clarification, if you want to load into the minute menu instead of automatically skipping it into Aroma, this is why we saved the FW IMG file in here so we can place it back on the root and load into minute. So for organizational sake, I'm gonna create a folder, fast boot image file. You can call it whatever you want, but this is a great way to just remember what it is. Grab the fast boot one, drag it inside there. Go to use in case of a brick. We're gonna cut it and paste it to the root. And there we go, you can eject it and I'll show you that it loads into the minute menu. So that's how you switch between going straight into Aroma or into the minute menu. It's kind of like if you have boot me as boot one, you just rename a file, change it back when you need it, etc. But I just wanted to emphasize that for those of you who want to use minute for anything else. And now that you have ISFS hacks installed, you can check out the description for guides on how to partition your USB, set up Red NAND, playing games from SD and more. But I hope this video was helpful and I hope you're able to set it up with ease. If you did run into issues, feel free to join my homebrew discord linked in the description and we can help you out there. There's lots of amazing helpers in there who know a lot about this stuff. But remember, they don't have to help, so just be respectful. Thank you for the support, guys. Make sure to hit like. I appreciate it greatly and I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>